All right, now that I'm in the, the midst of my color fills layer, it's easy for me to get rid of things I don't like because remember there's no white on my color fills layer. There's just the color that I'm putting on top. So if I want to select it, I can use the magic wand and I can simply click on it and delete. And if I want to continue painting with more of the color I've already used, like this shirt, I can just hold down option and steal it from myself and then start painting it in. So even though this shirt might have various tones to it, right now I'm just pretending it was all made with the same color thread, this bluish gray thread. And I'm going to block out the entire thing, get rid of all the, the white space, and fill it with this color. Now if I really want to save time, I'll kind of show you here so you can see it. I can just draw around the outlines of it until it's all contained, and then I can use the paint bucket and just drop that in. But you want to make sure you get the shape right. Now when I say get rid of all the whites, the kill whitey, it's not just on the figure, it's not just on the focal points, it's not just the skin tones. I need to pick a color for this background too. Like this uses a green. This is kind of hand colored, looks a little strange, this background. That green obviously is darker than the skin tones, whereas this door looks similar to his skin tones. So if I want it to be a green, I might steal it from here. And try that color in. And if that looks too dark, I might modify it by clicking on the foreground color tab there and just moving it closer to white. Remember these chromatic grays are incredibly powerful. Just a little bit of color makes a big difference. I'm using a 100% brush, 100% hardness, 100% opacity, 100% flow, and I'm using one with a tablet, one of these two, which is pressure sensitive for size. So the harder I press, the more of that circle gets filled in, which saves me a lot of time. And the tablets do take some practice, but they'll save you a lot of time versus a mouse. So it's kind of cream colored paint that I'll use as just my, my fill. Now because I've kind of filled in all of this, if I want that cream color, I can just use the paint bucket, fill it in. Okay, now his hat. I want his hat to appear this kind of color, but if I paint that color directly with the blacks and grays, it's going to look way too dark. So instead, I want to find the lighter version of that color, and maybe a little bit more saturated since so much black is going to be added into it. And I can use Command Z to zoom in, I can shrink my brush a little bit. That's a little too saturated, so let's put some more gray into it. There we go. Now by filling in these flat colors, in this color fill layer, this is what you call in photography and in art local color. Because we're allowing the, the silver nitrate crystals from the photo we scanned to create all of our black and gray values. In fact, I think the bill of this hat's probably just desaturated. So more of a neutral color, maybe even slightly warm. All right, so let me explain what I mean. So because we're just filling in with these solid colors and we're letting the, the blacks and grays from on top give us all our variation,
this type of color is what you call local color. It's the color the thing is no matter what lighting condition. So the local color of Woody Guthrie's skin is, is this kind of yellowish skin tone that I'm using. And the local color of his hair, despite any lighting, is this. And the color of his hat is this. And the color of his shirt is this. And his color of, the color of his guitar, I think I like this color. So I'm going to steal that and finish painting that in. So these are just local colors. After we're done filling in all the blacks, or I'm sorry, all the whites, then we start playing with the shadows and the highlights of those colors. And we'll have our own colors to steal from. And he's got these pinstripe suit pants. And what will I use for that? And what will I use for the side of his guitar? See, all of these choices make a big difference. And where I can, I want a reference from other photos. Usually the piping on these old guitars is ivory, which is kind of a yellowish. Actually, that's not a bad color for it. Let's try that. And if I just want to fill it in between what I already have, I can use the paint bucket and just drop it right there. Or right there. Right there. But mostly when I'm doing digital coloring, I just stay right on the brush tool. And I don't very much. I just steal colors, and that's about it. Try not to get lost in too much detail. You want to fill in all the different local colors. Remember, even the whites you should choose a color for. You might find the, the brightest bright you can find on a, on a photo, and you'll see that when you choose it, it's not pure white. So you should not have pure white in your palette either.
Now the reason we start with a 100% brush that's 100% hardness, it's cool here. You can even see because he was strumming with this thumb, you can see how his, um, his thumb is slightly out of focus there because it's moving yeah. in the shot. Color can help bring that to life. But the reason we use such severe color choices at this stage is so we are encouraged to make strong decisions about the color. And then we'll know where it needs to be modified. So let's see, how many whites do I have left? Just all this section. And then things like the buttons and the doorknobs, all the different surfaces. I'm just looking for pretty solid color shapes that I can work on top of. And my hope is that when I desaturate all of them, they're not way off. So if I take this layer, let me save it quickly. Then I go to Image, Adjustment, Desaturate. You see, with those colors desaturated, it's just a little bit darker, but not a whole lot darker overall. And where it is a whole lot darker, like on the pick guard, I'm going to be encouraged to make more interesting color choices or different color choices. But I'm still seeing all those textures. I can go back into my history before I desaturated and proceed with more confidence now. Let's see, sometimes you might have to do a a specific search. So if I look for a sunburst guitar guard, helps if you spell it right. But, but I might get the kind of colors I need to match. So I save that to the desktop first. And I can open it up in Photoshop. And then I can pull it as one of the references I use. And holding down spacebar allows you to move between all these references individually. And Command plus, Command minus allows you to zoom in and out. So far as pants, I think I might use some of the colors of this tie and vest. Way too dark. Let's find the lighter version of it. There we go. You know it's too dark if it gets rid of all the detail. And you'll really, um, through the act of coloring, you'll really recognize all the content in the photo. You'll never scrutinize a photo so closely. Now our goal here in one project is not to become expert colorization artists. It's a pretty specific skill. Rather, it is just to recognize how much color plays a part in photography and how much control we can have over it if we choose. Sneak some of that green in there for this background. <coughs> 